Oh, whoa! Are you kidding? Is it cool? Yes, it's cool. Thank you. <gasps> it's like not just cool, it's like refrigerator cold. It's Turbo John here. Today I've got a special treat for y'all. I think you're gonna like it. I am a budget racer, and so when you are on a budget, sometimes you have to think outside the box. I think outside the box a lot. I'm gonna show you something I never took to the next level. I was still in the prototype phase. I think it'll work and I think it'll go fast and it's freaking amazing when you look at it. Uh, this is something I come up with about five years ago. Somebody was putting water to air intercoolers on their car, picking up tremendously. I didn't really want to put a water to air in it. I didn't want a hassle of, you know, the, the ice, the water, the extra weight, but I wanted some of the advantage, the cold, dense air. I saw the CO2 kits, the ones that, that sprayed on the intercooler, on the air to air cores. And you know, they weren't good. There was some provable data out there where it helped, it picked up power. The, the air intake temperature was reduced when you sprayed nitrous or you know liquid CO2. And so I come up with a couple ideas. I was like, okay, I'm gonna take the tube, I'm gonna get a piece of you know quarter inch copper tube, and I'm gonna wrap it around the hot side pipe all the way from the turbo to the throttle body. And then you know spray it, and then hopefully that will cool it off. I quickly shot that down just because, you know, I didn't think there was enough surface area. It's just gonna be on the outside of the pipe. There's not gonna be a lot of air going through the cold side. I mean, the outside of the pipe would be cold, but you know, you need some type of fins. You need something that is like a radiator, you know, an intercooler core. And so I was thinking, I was just cruising down the road, middle of the summer, and it hit me. It hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, the automotive industry has already done this. They've already done some type of Freon and they put it and they run it through da, 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 an evaporator core. And so when you run it through an evaporator core, that's exactly what happens. The cold gas, the Freon, runs through here. Hot air comes in one side. The cold core is here and cold air comes out. And I was like, man, that's it. That is the ticket. That is exactly what needs to happen. That's what, that's what I need to do. So I got online and I started looking. This come out of a Ford F-150 and it's just a regular old evaporator core. Go to Google and search it and you'll see this exact one. The only thing that's different, I couldn't weld then. This was like five, six, seven years ago. I can't weld now, but you can see, I mean, I bubble gummed. You can see I bubble gum welded these fittings on here. And so when I got these fittings on here, I mean, it was pretty simple. My idea, you know, cut the bevel part off, of course. The bevel part's gone. And then that is the perfect size for a nitrous jet to go in. So we did a proof of concept. This is the prototype. I never finished it. I, I think this just got, I, I don't know why it got put on the back burner, but I found this in the garage the other day and I figured I'd share it with you. And you know, if anybody wants to try to do this, I think it'd be good. My idea, my plan, since this is not a regular core, you know, it can't be, you know, as welded on the ends because you see all these gaps and, and cracks here. Just to build a small box and drop this down in it and then have, you know, rubber on the bottom, the sides, and maybe on the top. And then I have just some braided line. I have my nitrous fitting on one side and then braided line coming off both sides. This one exiting the vehicle somewhere and this one coming from the CO2 box. Look at it, this would probably flow a lot of air. I don't know exactly how much horsepower it would support, but this is probably a little bit better than like a, a water core. And if you look at the difference between intercooler cores, an air to air core, you have the same amount of thickness on both. So you can see this one is really thin where the gas goes through. Then the air goes through here, so it's really wide. Air to water is a little bit thicker on this. And then an air to air core, Typically, air to air core is exactly 50%. Um, they're exactly the same. So whatever size this one is that the air flows through this way, the cold air from, or the boost going through it this way is the same size, just cause you know, it's not as cold. You're using ambient temperature to try to cool it down. I mean, this thing would fit, it would be very compact, not take up a lot of space at all. And so with it not taking up a lot of space, this thing might get finished. This might be a project that I finish. Um, if I don't finish it, maybe somebody else will, maybe somebody else will do it. I've got, I'm gonna show you the proof of concept on how it's gonna work, and then you can build your own. So check this out. Okay, so one thing that's very important in this setup, first thing is this holly box. It's got lots of stuff. It's got some nitrous jets in it. So this nitrous jet is a 52 thousandths. So this thing is just out of, um, you know, a nitrous kit that I used to have. And so I'm going to stick this down into the core here. And I've got one, one side beveled. Actually, they're both beveled. 
And you know, if you look at these intercooler cores, if you look at these things on online, what you'll find is that there's a big side and a little side. So I didn't really do a ton of research on the difference. Uh, I imagine the small side is gonna come in with a higher pressure and the larger side is gonna come with the, the lower pressure as it's you know, expanded, it's gonna get bigger. So I don't know a lot about that refrigeration aspect. I'm sure maybe somebody can chime in in the comments and let us know. It may be better to put it on one side or the other. When I actually had these holes cut out in this thing, they looked like they were the exact same. And you can look at it down here on the side. You know, these are, are they're the same side to side. So it may not make a difference on, on these side on each side. So this is a number four fitting instead of a number number three, but that's just what I have. Uh, so then I'm gonna just take my, my number four line here. Number three line would be fine too if you adapt it to a number three line. That would be no problem at all. You see the Turbo John t-shirt. If y'all ain't got a Tur Turbo John t-shirt yet, if y'all wanna go get one, that would be superb. Okay, so check this out. So this is the CO2 bottle. So everybody knows nitrous. So every car you see, nitrous cars, they have these things. Some of them, the, the, they used to have them turn like this and some of them are sitting straight up now, but you never see them turn upside down. Now CO2 bottles is a little bit different. And the difference is, this is a CO2 bottle, five pound CO2 bottle. I just got it swapped out at ARC3. You can also get these things filled at any type of brew supply place. Uh, they can do it. You can order these bottles for like a hundred bucks and then it's your bottle and then you just swap it out. Sometimes you get ones that are beat up. Sometimes people put, you know, different stickers and stuff on them, but that's cool. Um, so it's just easy. It's like $18 to swap it out. Five pound CO2 bottle for the race car lasts me forever. And so this is the way it sits. Check this out. See, there is no, it's just, it's just air. All it is is air. The CO2 is down at the bottom. So a nitrous bottle, they call it a dip tube or a siphon tube. So it has a tube that goes from this nozzle all the way down to the very, very bottom. So the pressure is on the top. And so when you open it and you have a nitrous bottle or a bottle with a, a dip tube or a siphon tube, then you get the liquids out of it. Now CO2 bottles, generally you don't want the liquid, the stuff that's really cold because we got regulators. If you have a regulator, we're trying to regulate it down to 60 or 100 PSI so we don't blow the wastegates apart. That was another thing I was gonna have to come up with. I was gonna have to have another CO2 bottle. That might've been one of the reasons why I didn't do it. So one bottle to run the intercooler and one bottle to run the, the boost control. But anyway, so if you take this thing, and since this one does not have a dip tube in it, in order for me to run this test, I would have to turn this bottle upside down. So now when I have this bottle turned upside down, now the CO2 has gone down to the bottom, the liquid CO2 is under pressure. I think it's gotta maintain, in order to stay in liquid form, it's gotta maintain like 60 or 100 PSI. But this thing's got like a thousand PSI usually on it. And it varies with cold. And that's why you see some people using torches, which is a bad idea on nitrous bottles. They're trying to heat up the bottle so that you get a little bit more pressure. The more pressure you have, the more, more nitrous comes out. So if I turn this thing upside down like this, and now, I know my, my, this bottle does not have a dip tube in it. So when I crack this valve open, watch what happens. Now I got liquid coming out. You can see it now looks like nitrous, but this is CO2. So now we got liquid coming out that way. So check this out. So I'm gonna hook it up to the bottle and I've got that nitrous jet there. Oh, this line is terrible. I'm gonna have to use the wrench, it is not very free. This, this is not the probably the easiest way to put this on. Okay, I got it. Oh my God, this is why I've got a turbo car. All these lines and fittings. Okay, so now I got this set up. So now I got my handy dandy infrared gun. And you see the temperature of this core. 75 degrees. Like a nitrous kit, but you can do it on a button. So you got a regular nitrous solenoid, perfectly fine. We know it can handle the pressure. So in this line right here, you could jet this. I mean, you could play with it. You might go down to like a, a 25 jet. Um, you know, so it might be very small. I don't think it's gonna take a huge amount to do it. But so you put a little valve here, a little nitrous solenoid. And then when you're trying to cool this off, 
you know, you just press the button is what I would do. I don't know that it would be necessary to run it the whole pass. It may be. It may be one of those things you can turn it on. You can pre-cool it and then, you know, turn it on for that, you know, four seconds, five seconds. And, you know, the obviously the bigger... The bigger jet you have in it, the the less the CO2 is, the less amount of time it's going to last. So you have to be careful with that. So check this out. So we're going to turn this on. Kelly, come here for a second. Okay. My lovely wife Kelly, she's going to be in charge of the the gun here. Okay. So she's going to be just holding this, shooting their temperature. Can you see it? Okay, you're going to have to do it from up here so you can, so you can actually see it. Okay, you're just gonna get some various temperatures. Where am I getting it? Anywhere just, just, on there? Yeah, different different places. Okay, so we're gonna weigh this bottle real fast first. Let's see what this weighs. 11 pounds, 12 ounces. So remember that. Okay, so we're gonna let it just go. And it should start getting, it's gonna start getting colder. This The CO2 is coming in here and it's going out here. So it's gonna go up here and then it's gonna come across and then go down. So it's gonna take it a little time okay ready what temperature we got we got about 72.8 where do you want me to start the temperature at do just you want me to do down here yeah well, i mean just just, just all over around? Okay. yeah just all over as long as you can keep the let's see all right let's see we'll crack it open I don't know if you can see it, but it's starting, it's starting to frost over. It went from 76 up there to 24 degrees up there. So we did it for what, maybe just a few seconds. So this thing, oh yeah, this thing is freezing cold. 39, 32, 26, 24. And then you go over here, it gets a little warmer. Now it's 62. Over. I don't know, and it may make a difference if maybe it needs to have a restriction over here on this side too. Because if you had a restriction on this side where it could come out slower. You're, six, you're 68 right there. It's dropping, but very slowly. What is it up there? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> minus. It tried to get away. It's minus like two. Minus two. Up in the corner up there. And it's like 60 down here. So it's definitely, it's coming up this way. What about over here on this side? We're looking at around 45. Let's check this out. Look at it steaming. Or, well, I don't know if it's steaming. 18 degrees. 22. Oops, up there's seven. Seven. Three. <laughs> So this thing is very cold, and you can see, I mean, the, 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 the frost is coming on it. I mean, it's crazy how it's just very... It's very it's cold. negative up there in the corner. Wow, that is cold, cold. And this, so... There's still 64 down here. So maybe, maybe the solution would be to have two of these. Have, have a smaller one, and then a smaller one. Look, oh yeah, starting to frost up. See it frosting up there mm -hmm. in the corner? You can see it. Oh, that's cool. Careful. Let's see if I can get it closer to the camera. Don't freeze or burn yourself. I know, right? Oh, you can see the steam on the camera. Can you? Yeah. Against the black table. Oh, that is so cold. Wow. What's that temperature? That is four. Minus four. Negative four. Oh, there it is. Negative six was the lowest, I think. Negative four. Negative 4.7 right now. Negative eight. Now it's going up over on this side. But on the very corner, it was negative four. What was it right there? Uh, 51. <laughs> That's a big difference. So I don't know what the solution is. I mean, I'd like, there again, this was just a prototype. It does work. It gets cold. Let's see. How much What was, What? was? How much did the bottle weigh a minute ago? 11.12. 12, I think. So right now we're at 11.1. So it's used 11 ounces. So not even a pound of CO2. Back up to about 10 degrees on this corner. 
Wow, that is cold. Okay, let's, let's, let's see. I'm gonna just do it for another like couple seconds. Okay. Into the wall. <laughs> well, I guess that's a definitely a side. Negative nine point seven. Negative seven. Negative five. Wow. I think it needs a smaller jet. This side is a uh, eighteen twenty three about twenty. And then our corner up here, where we have the airflow is 54, and where it's coming in is 41. So, but up, so the whole core now is definitely, it's cold. God, negative 11 in that corner. 14, negative 14. Okay, so now we're at 10, point, uh, 10 pounds and 10 ounces. So right now we've used about a pound of CO2. What temperature is that? This is negative, almost, it's negative 14. Wow, son. Touch it with your hand. I know, right? Let's try it. Rip your skin off. Hey, <laughs> stick your tongue to it. I was, no, you stick your tongue to it. I, I dare, ain't sticking my I tongue to it. I dare you. I'm sticking my tongue I to double it. Dare you. No, you're crazy. And I can call 911 and they'll be like, why did you stick your tongue to an evaporator core? <laughs> and they'll say, it's all for the race. Wow, that is minus 22. Is that what it is? Yeah, I think it did for a second there. In the, in, in the inside, if I can get the beams on the little inside the dip. Minus 16. Man, Go down here on this side. That's crazy. Oops. That's crazy. The, what is it now across the whole core? So the whole core is starting to soak too. 40, oh, there's 55 in that corner. And then go up. Look at the frost on it. It is 13 degrees. 13 degrees in that corner now. Wow. And then over there is super cold, of course. And we're back to negatives over in this corner where it's all frosted. That's something. Wow. Look at the. Okay, I'll, I'll leave no, my finger. Oh, don't! Oh. It didn't stick that. Ah. <laughs> it did stick. Did it? Yeah, not bad. Oh. If that was my tongue, though, it would be bad. Yeah. Let's not do that. Oh, that's cold. <laughs> but why is it so cold? Okay. I can hear your skin sticking to it. I know, it's crazy. Ooh, that, look, it's got frost. Is that frost? Flushy anymore? Scrape that off and... It is so cold. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm just... And the, so the ambient temperature out here now is... I mean, it's... it's that says, oh, that's where it was sitting on there. I was going to say, yeah, do the other side of the table. 70... 75 degrees is what everything is in here. So the table where, look how cold it's got the table. <laughs> it's still minus, minus one, minus a half, minus two, 22. So if you did, if you did the, the average, so up there is zero, there is 20. So the average is 10, 51, and then 41. So the average temperature of this core is 20 degrees or so. So I mean that is that is very cold. And so I think I mean there again I mean proof proof of concept I guess I mean this thing is cold. It's really cold. It's really really cold. So does that tell, what does that tell us? It tells us that this could be an inner core. It could using CO2 liquid CO2 going through this evaporator core mm -hmm. if you build a box and then had the turbo over here on this side mm -hmm. blowing through here okay. and then this going to the motor oh, I see. oh man we oh we don't have a faint kelly blow through it <gasps> wow that's cold well, coming I out my hair dryer i mean see how what the temperature difference is in the air from the hair dryer through the other side good idea go get it real All fast right. awesome idea see that's a great idea. It's still zero degrees up there. <laughs> Minus three. Down on this side, 40, 50. Right, there's the hair dryer. Okay, so Kelly has went and got her hair dryer. So we're going to put it on cool. 
We're not gonna put it on hot. Although I guess we could put it on hot because I mean, honestly, on hot is it's gonna be hot coming out. I was gonna say put it on hot because we yeah. want to see what we want. How, to see how much it cools? Works. Measure the air coming out of it. Okay. And then we'll put it on the thing, and you measure the air on the other side. How about that? Good idea. So all the way hot. Yeah. Okay, give it a second. Okay. Ooh, that's hot. 150 degrees. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Whoa! Are you kidding? Is it cool? Yes, it's cool. Thank you. <gasps> it's like not just cool. It's like refrigerator cold. Okay, go up to this. Look at look at the frost coming off. 29 degrees. It's warming up 37, 45. Move it around to four. Forty, thirty-nine down there. If I follow your hand, okay, now it's now it's starting to warm up a little bit. Forty-eight. Okay, turn it off. I still got cold air coming out. On this side though is a hundred and hundred and six degrees is the highest, and over here on this side is still seventy-five, seventy. Hmm. So, it, wow, that is amazing. Interesting science experiment. I know, right? Okay, wait, anything okay, hot? Wow! Follow my, follow the... Oh! Yeah, you can feel it's, where it's cooler and where it's warmer. It's cooling all, it's still cooling it though. Yeah, now I'm getting heat though. You're getting heat now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so now it's, it's done. But what we did at first, it was like refrigerator cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't just like cool. It went from 100 and some degrees to 40. Right. Wow, guys. So that works. The proof of concept, CO2 intercooler. All right, that works. Giving your idea to the world. Yep, yep, we're sharing this idea with the world, whoever wants to do it and test it on a vehicle. That's the key, that's the, that's the tell all. Guys, well that's it. That is uh, the theory, the carbon dioxide, the CO2 intercooler. Let me know if y'all think it'll work or not. I mean, somebody's gotta do it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to or not. I may or may not. All right, y'all comment, like, and subscribe. Go fast, get some wind lights. Bye.